Hi guys, Andrew here with headphones.com. Welcome to the headphone show. And today we're gonna to talk all about this. This is the Drop X Hi-Fi Man HEX4. Not HE4XX, not HE4X, X4. And I am confident that I'm gonna screw that up in this video. This is Drop's latest collaboration with Hi-Fi Man to produce yet another entry-level planar magnetic over-ear open back headphone. Let's check it out. Okay, so as a disclaimer, this unit was sent to me by Drop for evaluation, but I've not been paid to say anything in particular about it, and all thoughts and opinions are my own. Big thanks to Drop for sending it along for review. In any case, let's get on with the review here, and I gotta say, when I got this in, I thought this was the same headphone, exactly the same headphone, as what I just recently reviewed, the HE400SE from Hi-Fi Man. And actually, they are extremely similar, and if you haven't seen that video, uh, I've left a link in the description for that because it is worth getting a sense of how this performs to understand how this performs. In fact, they are so similar that I was convinced they were acoustically identical and that this was just, you know, a, a slightly rebranded or, you know, different colored one. But in fact, they are not acoustically identical. And I'm going to go over that in this video, but I am going to spoil the review here a little bit and give my conclusion right off the bat and say that these two headphones are similar enough as far as how they sound that you shouldn't base your purchase decision on any sonic qualities, but rather all the rest of it. And by that, I mean the weight, the comfort, the cable, etc., etc. I'm gonna first go over why these are not actually acoustically identical, and the drivers are, in fact, different from one another. Um, at, least, at least the international version of the HE400 SE is not the same as the HEX4 for the driver, and then also explain why that ultimately doesn't matter. <laughs> so I'm gonna begin by showing you guys why I thought these two headphones were acoustically identical. The first thing that you'll notice is when you take the pad here off of the headphone, off of the cup, and look at the drivers, at first glance, they look like they're the same. And for anybody who's wondering, these are both using double-sided mag magnetic structures, even though that's not the only parameter there, there are multiple other parameters. This just happens to be one that people focus on, but you know, it, it's not an indicator of better or worse, whether it's double-sided or single-sided. It's just one way of doing a planar magnetic transducer. But in any case, they look very similar to one another for the driver, all the way down to even the color of the glue that's used. You can see it's sort of like a pinkish color there. Um, add to that the fact that the pads are also identical and the frequency response, which I'm going to show on the screen here, is also nearly identical. Um, now, it's not it's not perfectly identical for the frequency response, but it's close enough to where I think you'd be able to you know, look at it and go, well, that's within you know, unit variation tolerances or positional variance and things like that. And I really do think that that is the case. I really do think that you know, when switching back and forth, I couldn't really tell much of a difference as far as the sound quality is concerned. And that actually is a very good thing because the HE400 SE, which again, I recently reviewed, is a very good sounding headphone uh, for the price. Uh, again, I don't think that this is competing with the HD 560S from Sennheiser. I think that's still a little bit better. That's the next step up. Uh, but you know, for the price that it comes in at, it definitely is, uh, it's, it's a front runner there for me. Now, with the HEX4, the same things apply. All the same things that I said about the HE400SE apply to this one. But the reason why I'm saying now that these are not actually acoustically identical headphones, it has to do with the magnet structure that the HE400SE has that the HEX4 does not have. And what is that? Well, the HE400SE has what Hi-Fi Man have called here their stealth magnets. And that's essentially what you get when the that the magnet is sort of rounded off. Now, conceptually, the stealth magnet system that Hi-Fi Man have employed in a number of their headphones now, it's not all that dissimilar from what's going on with uh, Odyssey's phasers, even though the implementation is a little bit different. But in the case of these two headphones, it really doesn't make any difference. And that's also in part evidenced by the frequency response that you can see and how, how similar it is. And subjectively, they also sound identical to the point where I don't think I'd be able to get the right answer in a blind test between these two. So I think there are a lot of people who are gonna look at the HE400 SE and go, okay, this has the stealth magnets there, and therefore it's better because this has that technology while the HE X4 doesn't. And I think maybe, again, conceptually, there is a difference there, and we might see this make a more significant difference in other headphones with different parameters for the rest of the driver and the rest of the transducer. Like, for example, a different diaphragm going on there, a different structure entirely, a different size. 
maybe it's going to have a bigger in impact with that. You know, they do the stealth magnet stuff with the really high end headphones as well. Um, so maybe it has a more significant difference there. But in the case of these two headphones in particular, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really think there's any difference. Um, and that's to do both with frequency response and with technical performance. Now, there is a slight difference in behavior for frequency response. They both have a resonance when you introduce an air gap right at around 100 hertz, but they're not exactly in the same spot. Um, and then also the distortion characteristics are a little bit different between these two as well. But again, with that said, it's not exactly clear that one is categorically better than the other when it comes to the distortion me measurements or the air gap behavior. So none of this is conclusive enough to say that, you know, one headphone is better or the one with the uh, stealth magnets is better than the one without. It just is enough to say that they are actually different drivers going on in there. And this is actually kind of what revealed this to me when I was doing my measurements of these because I thought, wow, these are the same. They measure with the same for frequency response. And then I started doing these additional tests and went, wait a second, they're not. Now, one other thing to note here, um, these do change a little bit their frequency response for both of them, the HEX4 as well, uh, depending on the pads that you put on them. They don't change that much though. And I, I honestly don't think it's worth buying additional pads for these headphones. I think these pads are actually the more comfortable ones compared to the other pads that the Hi-Fi Man makes, at least the older ones. With this sort of uh, velour material, it's quite a bit nicer. So for any tuning changes that you would want, I would just get into EQing them. Uh, essentially, to describe this a little bit, the HEX4 and the 400SE, they're a little lean in the base and they're a little bit dipped there at around 2K, 1.5 to 2K. But for the rest of the frequency response, they're both solid. They both have a really nice, even treble presentation. Uh, yeah, there's a little bit of a peak there at around 8K, but it's really not bad at all. And I would take either of them, or both of them, over the Drop HE5XX, which is essentially the Deva, acoustically the same as the Deva. Now, the same downsides that I mentioned with the HE400SE apply to the HEX4, and it's that the technical performance here is not that special. It is a little bit sluggish on the leading edge for the transients, the initial leading edge there. It's not quite as snappy or well controlled as the higher end uh, Sundara and neither of them are particularly impactful for their macrodynamic quality either. And as far as the rest of the technical performance here goes, you have a, a decent sense of space and stage, certainly better than what you get on the HD6XX, uh, a little bit more similar to the 560S, although maybe not as even on the image distribution there. Uh, but it is a little bit more spacious, doesn't have the three blob effect of, you know, the six series Sennheisers. And while you might not get the same kind of, you know, distance between the notes and separation qualities as the Sundara, you do still get the planar advantage of control during busy passages and generally good instrument separation that and all the different qualities that come along with, um, you know, planar magnetic technology in general. So as far as the sound quality is concerned, both of these are solid performers for the price. And again, I think the biggest competition comes from the slightly more expensive Sennheiser HD 560S. It's a little more well extended in the base. It's a little bit more filled in the mids at the cost of not, a, not as smooth of a treble response with the 560S. Now, essentially I've said that these are not acoustically identical, but that for the subjective experience here and the objective data, it's basically a wash between them. They are close enough to where the experience is pretty much the same or close enough. Um, even though, yeah, they, they do have different drivers going on in here. And I'm guessing at this point, none of that really helps you guys decide which one to go for, which one to get. Um, so I'm going to go through the rest of the differences here because I really think that actually is the thing that you should base your purchase on, not any of the sonic differences that might exist here. I really think you should base your choice on the other qualities that these two have. So let's go through that now. Uh, the first thing that you'll notice is that the, uh, the headband is different. And I'm going to say right now, the headband on the HE400SE is better in my opinion. It's, I prefer it. The comfort is better. It's also lighter by about 30 grams. Now that doesn't sound like it's all that much, but it is, it, it, it does add up. And so this one is right at around 385 grams while the HEX4 is around 420 grams. So while the overall weight difference is somewhat insignificant, uh, the fact that this headband on the 400SE is a little bit more comfortable um, and it doesn't sort of clamp down as strongly as what you get with the X4 on my header. I guess people with larger heads in general, audiophiles are all people with large heads. This one does tend to clamp a little bit more right here, like right at this, the, the sides here. Now I got to say, it's not significant enough to where it would bother me, but the fact that the 400 SE is more comfortable 
that's a significant thing to me. The other difference is that the yoke structure on the X4 is the more traditional old school Hi-Fi Man yoke structure where there is a little bit of cup swivel um, actually on the yoke itself um, where the arm connects to the yoke. Whereas on the 400 SE, that's the newer, somewhat um, cheaper feeling uh, yoke structure, uh, or at least w with the arm where the pivot point is actually with this plastic piece and that feels particularly flimsy. So the build, for the arm and yoke structure and pivot point feels more sturdy on the X4, even though, uh, you know, yeah, the clicks here are a little bit more satisfying um, on the new headband. So I don't think there's a massive winner there either way. And then of course the last one is uh, the look of it. And yeah, I mean, I, I gotta say, I, I prefer the look of the HEX4. I like that sort of all black and matte design. This speaks to me, especially because it's. I like the metal uh, for the for the actual yoke. On both units, the yokes are metal, and the new headband does. It is a little bit more refined there as far as its design is concerned. But there's something about this look that reminds me of the old HE500 that I had. So I feel a little bit nostalgic for that, and I kind of like that. Uh, that sort of like, yeah, metallic looking finish there. And it contrasts really nicely with the matte black on this one. So uh, for the looks, I do prefer the HEX4, no doubt about that. Uh, now, lastly, this is what actually might uh, tip the scales in favor of the X4 over the 400 SE. And it's that the cable for the X4 is actually a really decent cable, again, for the price. This is nothing that special, but it's, it's a totally functional, solid working cable that I have no issues with whatsoever. And this is better than literally every Hi-Fi Man cable <laughs> that I've ever come across. So this is, I have no problems there with this. Uh, whereas the cable on the HE400SE, oh my God, is this thing ever terrible. This is possibly the worst cable that I've ever come across. It, it's, this is, this just needs to not exist. And it's also super microphonic. So, you know, if if you're thinking about like overall value for money here, not having to go out and buy another cable for like $30 or something like that does actually put the X4 in the lead, uh, even though, you know, maybe for comfort and ergonomic reasons, the 400 SE might be the one to actually go for here. Now, personally, I already own a number of different cables that have uh, 3.5 millimeter connectors, which is what these use. So that wouldn't be much of a deciding factor for me. And because of that, I would probably end up going with the 400 SE over the X4 because I just much prefer the headband. Even though it's not the greatest headband, I, I just think I, it's better than this headband here. Now it's at this point where I would normally do some comparisons, but again, I've done all those comparisons with the 400 SE and they sound basically the same to me to the point where I don't think it's worth doing that again. If you wanna know what my thoughts are of the 400 SE's sound quality compared to competitors like the HD 560S, the 6XX, um, and the Hi-Fi Man Sundara, which I know they're more expensive, but you know, the the next sort of tier there. You can watch the video on the 400 SE because all the things I said about that one apply to this one as well, uh, at least as far as the sound quality is concerned. Um, and I do also wanna note here, guys, that if you wanna look more closely at the measurements that have been done, I will have posted all these up on the headphone community forum and there'll be a link there. So you can take a deep dive into that if you like, including the air gap behavior measurements, uh, which do show a little bit of a difference there and the distortion uh, characteristics as well, if you guys care about that stuff. Um, but just keep in mind that none of this is like indicators of what the actual experience is like. Distortion is just another metric there. And in both cases, the distortion is low enough to where it's below the audible threshold. So that really shouldn't play a role. Honestly, with these ones, yes, you can probably, you know, enjoy the story about the stealth magnets. And if that makes you enjoy the headphones more, then the 400 SE is going to be the better choice for you. But as far as everything to do with sort of the sonic merits of each of them, it's a wash between the two. And I really think that they're both good sounding headphones for the price and that you should base your decision around the other qualities like the comfort, like the cable, like the aesthetics, you know, the yoke structure, that kind of thing. Um, so that's really going to be my conclusion here. However, the more interesting thing that's come out of this evaluation, for me at least, is to learn that the stealth magnets, they don't really do that much in these headphones. So I think, again, this is something where in theory, at least conceptually, there is a, maybe a benefit to using the stealth magnets and using that sort of rounded edge on the, on the magnet structure. But in practice, with the rest of the transducer design here, for, I, for both of them, 
it doesn't really seem to make much difference. So of course I'm going to recommend both of them, but I would implore you to just not be persuaded by any particular story that gets told one way or the other about the sound quality that's involved and how it's, a, you know, how much better it is than anything else. It is really the other aspects, the intangibles or the tangibles that you should uh, base your decision on um, and nothing to do with how they sound because they are so darn close that I don't think it makes a difference. In any case, that does it for this evaluation. Thanks for taking the time to watch it and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.